Hello friends, my name is Dave Miller. And I'm Niall Spain. And we're your fuck buddies. We are a dating and sex advice podcast where we take your sticky, sexy situations and turn them to sexy, sticky situations. Simply put, we are a sex and dating advice podcast. We find questions either online or from our wonderful listeners and we answer them right here in your ears or on stage monthly and also on an extra episode on Patreon. That's true. Well, before we get to that, this week we will be discussing, did my boner disrespect her culture? (laughs) (laughs) finally losing your virginity i posed as a the boyfriend of a married woman but now i'm catching feelings and saying things you're not really into and before we get to all that i do have some sex news i want to talk about it's okay. a jam-packed fucking episode we're squeezed in the closet we gotta squeeze some material into your ears are you ready yep. yeah uh now this is this has been brought to my attention from one of my favorite podcasts which is one of your favorite podcasts my brother, my brother, and me. Okay. Are you up to date? Did you listen to the newest episode? I have episode? not listened to the newest episode. No. Okay. So I'm going to spoil the Munch Squad. Pizza Hut are doing a thing called Goodbye Pies Ooh. for Halloween. Or not Halloween. Jesus. Valentine's for Day. For Valentine's Day. Yeah. That's the one. Uh, where you can break up with people by sending them a Domino's or a Pizza Hut pizza. Okay. Breakups are awkward. We can help. Send a free hot honey goodbye pie from now through Valentine's Day, and the delivery driver will deliver the bad news in the best way. What do you th- what do you think about that? Okay, hold on. Does the delivery driver actually have to be like, "Yo, you're getting broken up with," or is the best way just like you get a pizza and the box says like you're dumped? <laughs> well, like if you were getting a pizza and you didn't know, the delivery driver would have to be like, "Somebody got this for you, I guess." You know what I mean? Like you'd probably put it in the instructions. So it's like this person's going to be unaware they're getting a pizza. The driver has to know it's a breakup pizza. Yeah, it says on the it says goodbye pie. There's the box. It says goodbye pie. It has a broken heart. You get to write their name, and I believe there's space to write like a little note. Yeah, I mean that. I look. I don't care what anyone does and how they want to live their life. You know what I mean? I'm just saying, don't make a dude who's forced to work for tips. Oh, for sure. And like, don't make him the one to deliver the news. Like, also, if, if he just has to show up at the door and is like here's your pizza, goodbye, yeah. then like, fine, whatever, I don't give a fuck. But if, it, if if this poor dude or lady or whoever is expected to go up to a stranger and be like, hey, here's your breakup pizza, your partner wanted me to tell you that you're dumped, bye. Because like, someone's not going to take this well and someone is going to get murdered. <laughs> oh, for sure. This man, there's nothing in the world you could be paid that would make that worthwhile. No. But secondly, don't break up with people by sending them a pizza. Uh, Maybe break up with them and then send them a pizza. Yes. If I broke up with someone and then they were like, here's dinner. I think that would soften the blow. Also hot honey, hot honey pizza. Hot honey pizza does sound fucking pretty good. Now, how would you think about this? They also have a a breakup excuse generator. Okay. I hit you with the first three. I'm just going to hit the random. First one is I just don't think your furniture would look good in my apartment. (laughs) Okay. I have been reborn as a mighty Falcon and now must migrate South for the winter. (laughs) Okay. I, you know, you ate all my cheese sticks and didn't offer to replace them. Damn. That's a weird one to throw at someone if that's not what they did. Especially if you're dating like a vegan or something. Yeah. It's just like, what? no, I didn't. Who are you? And like the other, I think the Falcon is actually the, the worst one too, because it's like everyone in their relationship has always been like, hey, if I turn into a worm, would you still love yeah. me? So if you turn into a Falcon, yeah, you're got, you got cooler. Yeah. You're more sleek, more aerodynamic. You can finally hunt for me. If I was Dave? with a partner who was like, oh, by the way, I'm a, kick ass falcon now i'd be like i'm sorry i can be a falconer yeah. with literally no training mm-hmm. i can just get one of those cool ass gloves and you like at any point in time i can just like make a whistle and you'll just show up and i'll just but like, hand jobs i mean the sex aspect you of get, it you got one hand job and you're dead they get one dicking and they're dead i mean i definitely you can't you can't do it you can't fuck your falcon boyfriend or girlfriend i just hit break up again and it's i can't tell if you're joking about not believing in the moon landing which that's fair. I, you know what? And I don't know what this says about me. And I'm sorry if, if this hurts anyone's feelings, but the more I think about it, the more I are, my cat's going fucking going nuts. In the I don't background. know if you can hear it, but he's singing us the song of his people. He's singing a song and we love it. Um, this is what happens when we're in. It's, it's bad when I'm in here by myself. 
but uh and now it's great because i'm also in here. yes but whenever there's another person in here which is only nile except for the oh i almost revealed that i had a secret third <laughs> podcast with someone else i'm gonna search this podcast for clues this <sighs> Closet? closet yes this closet. Words, are, words are good words for are today. words hard good i don't think there is anything outside of a large financial financial compensation that would ever inspire me to make another fucking podcast <laughs> I, I've, i hey it's gonna happen i know for a fact within two years dame will have a third oh, podcast Christ. hopefully with me or maybe not i don't know i don't want another one i mean i again if we were making a shit ton of money on said podcast. I'd be okay. If that's all I had to do. Sure. Just make money. Yeah. Me too, dude. On on the podcast. Yeah. Uh, we should probably get to the questions. Yeah. I'm sure you want to hear about this. Yeah. This I, boner. I, I do. Uh, throw our a eight, one, three, six. I 20 year old male got a boner while in the sauna with my girlfriend, 19 year old female. Now she's angry and says I disrespected her culture. My girlfriend is from Finland where sauna culture and nudity is way different than here in the States. She's still living with parents who are first generation immigrants and wanted a built in sauna in their house, which is cool. I personally never tried an authentic Finnish sauna until last night. And well, yeah, didn't go that well. I'm not used to seeing the opposite sex naked in non-sexual situations. So, well, I got a boner while we were doing the whole sauna thing. I know she wasn't happy with it because she started getting passive aggressive. But today she opened up about it being really disrespectful towards our culture and that you can't just get a boner at a spa or a mixed sauna. And I'm not really sure how to navigate this because to me, it doesn't seem like that big a deal. But she thinks it is. Uh, they're 19. He's 20. She's 19. OK, like you're in the age in which everything will give you an erection. You're in it's, the boner danger zone. Yeah, you're you're in sort of like, <laughs> yes, I think the boner danger zone is the exact phrase that you need to use. And like, I, I understand that women don't know a lot about boners. what what the, what this means right like you don't know the visceral terror mm -hmm. and shame of again a very natural thing like think of boners the way that like the general male population of things of like periods right like 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 no one really understands it Fake. why don't you just <laughs> hold it in um uh, yeah things <laughs> and like you know, like there's there's a ton of misinformation that like young boys tell each other about pyra or, I was pyramids. About to say, yeah, I was to say pyramids, <laughs> um, which Little was eight year old Nile was lied to by yeah. a lot of boys. Um, so like with with erections, the second you hit sort of puberty, I would say like like early stages of puberty, anything can give us an erection. Oh yeah. Oh, and is the math teacher who's like eighty seven years old? doing a, a weird like up and down motion with the chalk is she really highlighting that one or uh oh is guess it I, like guess that's hot for me are you like oh i might be asked in like a turn or two to come up to the board mm. i hope i don't get oh oh shit it, uh -oh. It, it wants to defy me like yeah. yeah everything also one of the main things that would make me get a boner uh oh probably still being naked with my partner like yes. you know what i mean like i i would get in that sauna right now and i'd be like hey like i'm sorry and it wouldn't be on purpose which i think is the main point here you'll have the boner button because if you do all all male fear or a lot of male fear for the the generation of our our teens gone and, and then also the fear for later years uh, when oh, you yeah. know yeah. erections are unpredictable and then they're just like actually you know what in drama class when you were lying down in sweatpants i definitely gave you a boner yeah. but now you're about to have sex with a really attractive woman that you really really like maybe i'll maybe i won't get hard yeah maybe i won't do that did you know that you wasted one of your finite <laughs> amounts of boners yeah. when you really didn't want one hey remember when you're at the beach and you couldn't get out of the sea <laughs> yeah it was all cold but i still i was still raging yeah now you can't have sex with the woman you love. I love, or a lot of women don't understand that there is a boner counter. Every man is born with a boner counter. And well, every time we get one. Technically. I mean, I get, uh, well, no, no. No, yeah. There's going to be an X, X amount of boners in your life. Yes. But I want to say, is there predetermined? <laughs> is there boner predetermination? We don't know. Man. I don't know. Man. That's the thing, right? Is that one of God's cool, cool magic tricks? Hey, we might have both had our last boner. God. This, 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 why do I keep saying the wrong words for things? This yeah, closet cosmetic. could just implode and that would, we'd have had our last boner. Our Falcon girlfriends could come in and just tear our dicks right off. Exactly. Especially if we disrespected their cultures <laughs> with our boners. Um, okay. So I understand sort of like both sides of things where he 
you you can't control an erection and you can't by all means if you are if i'm with a person that i find sexually attractive and they are naked the likelihood of me getting an erection or at least slightly aroused significantly increases yeah. than if i was in a room full of like sweaty old men yes right that's just science and chemistry and biology yeah. and, and how we work. And importantly, like he was never raised in this culture. So he's been like Pavlov's were new to the equals horny. You know and that's, I mean? and that's the thing. It's like Western views of nudity and, and th- like that. It, it's, it's not something. And, and as he said as well, like you, like, I think she's looking at it from one side of things, but like is lacking the empathy of being like, cause mm-hmm. she's like, Oh, this is my culture. Like I'm raised around nudity. Yeah. Nudity is not a like, sexual thing, but like, it's like, okay. she didn't get wet. So she disrespected his culture. Right. Yes. Thank you. Like right? if she sat up and he was like, Oh, mm-hmm. that's a dry bench, w- which would be weird in a sauna. And what, and that's the thing. That's how disrespectful <laughs> she now, uh, like, Obviously, look, so many things. Boners, you don't have control over them. So we one, don't. if it is disrespectful, it is not intentional. Yeah. Two, it's not his culture. Mm-hmm. Three, there's so many Finnish people popping off in the comments being like, come on, don't. Yeah. And that's the thing. It's like if, if it would be a much different thing is if like, you know, this was like during a prayer or something. And while people are sort of, I, I know Even hey, then, the boners, they but, don't, they don't listen to Jibo. But I, I think there's a, a greater standing of being like, look, they, these are fully clothed women, like on their knees, like doing a prayer or, or whatever. And you can be sure. like, and you can be like, this is kind of fucked up. Like, this is a very important part of my culture and my religion, blah, blah, blah. Like and, that I would get. And even then, you don't have control over your boners. So you yes. can be like, I get it. And I'm sorry, but like, I didn't like, and unless you're some kind of weird prayer pervert. Yeah. You know? Um, but yes, it, 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 to be like, look, we were naked. I find you very physically attractive and I'm sexually attracted to you. Also like probably the first time he's done a naked sauna spa thing, which itself is kind of like exciting. And you, he was probably like, I better not get the boner. Yeah. And his boner was like, gotcha. <laughs> oh yeah. I, um, it, I could see it if he was like, yeah, let's fuck, let's fuck. She was like, no, we're just chilling in the sauna. He was like, yes. no, come on. Like, we, like we're going to fuck. And like, that would be active, like disrespect or like active, like ignoring blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Whereas even if he was like, Hey, let's fuck. She was like, Oh no, we're just going to hang out. And he was chill. I don't even think that would be disrespectful. Yeah. No. I, I, yes. I, I think that's really where it comes at. Like we need to start looking at like intention of things. Yes. Right. At no point in time did he, like he wasn't stimulating himself to get an erection. As far as we know. As far as we know. Um, Maybe that's it. Maybe because he's the one writing this. He's like, oh, I did. I just had a boner and was jerking it so hard. Like, yes. Right. Like, and, and as as you said, like if he was hitting her with it, right. Like just being like, huh, look at it. Look at it. Let's do something yeah. with it. Then like, yeah, for sure. It's like this. She was sharing something of her culture. If he and put you the were... fucking glove on his dick and <laughs> did the whistle and then she had to come and then she'd be like, oh, Real mature. Uh, really cool. Yeah. So I don't think this is a disrespect of a culture. No. I don't think so. I understand the there's there's a cultural divide of like how nudity is viewed. Mm-hmm. And you guys need to come together in the middle and hey. listen to each other and be like, hey, I don't have control over my erections. If it, if this upset you, I'm very sorry, but I meant nothing by it. I, I wasn't trying to do anything to offend you. And really, I, I'm going to get aroused when I see you naked. And there's nothing I can do about that. My body is going to do what my body is going to do. If you'd like, the next time we do it, I can wear a towel. And that way, if I do get an erection, you're not going to be super privy to mm. it if, if it really does bother you that much. But at the same time, I don't have a whole lot of say in when yeah. my body decides to get aroused. I really wanted to know if the reason she was upset was because the parents were also there. But... They did do an update since I downloaded this question earlier, and it was just him and the girlfriend. Okay, I was going to say there's also a level of comfort and like respecting other people's cultures of being like, if like I would not get in an, a, a naked sauna with my partner's parents, and I don't care no. if my partner's parents are fucking Chris Hemsworth and Scarlett Johansson. It's even worse, R- like, then my boner is assured. Yeah, <laughs> no. In one way, I'm very aroused, and the other way, I'm very emasculated. So, yes, yeah, so it's the worst situation for me. It's the same thing with like. People who are, who are grown up, like raised in sort of like hippie society and like sort of like that free love thing mm. where it's just like, oh, you grew up in the woods and everyone was naked all the time. And it, but it's like, surely, you know, that 
this isn't how it is everywhere. Sure. Or like I grew up in Ireland. I don't have to be like, oh, you have to drink a bottle of vodka in this McDonald's bathroom right now. Like what? Like, yeah. No, it's not how it works. It's it's fine. You, you're you OK. Just talk to one another. And if she doesn't get it, if she can't mm-hmm. like understand then maybe this isn't the person for you. Yeah. If she doesn't understand how a boner works at the very basic level. Do you want that person handling your boner? Yeah. Uh, this is ain't going nowhere. 97. A girl is finally willing to have sex with me. I'm a virgin. I'm kind of scared of sex. I'm a guy who's 26 years old and a virgin. I've been asking girls out in person lately and finally found a girl that is taken a uh, liking to me. We spent hours cuddling together while watching a movie in the theater. Now she says she actually wants to hook up. So I guess it's time now. What I've been waiting for, uh, my whole teenage and adult life is here. So we have set up a meeting tomorrow for Valentine's Day. We plan to do it in the back of her car. Dang, I'm really nervous. I hope my dick works like I'm not really able to sleep much or think about anything other than this. I guess I'm pretty scared of sex, which is why I was never able to hold down a relationship before. I guess the girls thought I was asexual and lame, so they ghosted me. This time, this girl is willing to work with me since I told her all this. So I guess I have to just do this and get it over with, or I'll be alone forever. There's a lot of hyperbole in this. <laughs> I really appreciate that my like that you told her and yeah. that she is willing to work. Like that's great because that was going to be one of the things I brought up that like you've already proven why things have gone wrong when you haven't communicated. And I appreciate that one way or another you either have learned or she drew it out of you, but like that's a really good first step. Yeah. So I'd clap, but Dane would yell at me for doing it into the mic. I would. Uh, So I'm going to whistle instead. Yes. It worries me that all you've done is cuddle in a movie theater, apparently. Mm. So, like, don't jump from that to sex if that's all you've done, like, with this girl or in general. If it's in general, definitely not. If it's only with this girl, like, take it slow. Like, do the, you know, do hand stuff next. Do mouth stuff. You know what I mean? You don't need to rush it. Make out. Make out, right? Like, if all you've done is cuddled in a public theater, there's a fucking armrest between you. That didn't even count. Not always. You can put those bad boys up now. Okay. We're all going to bougie theaters. Sure. <laughs> uh, in this fucking Dane's utopian world. <laughs> but like that, my cat, my, my advice, don't go too fast. Right. Yeah. Two, guess I have to do this, get it over with one. You don't have to do it Two, getting it over with. Like, I understand where you're coming from, but yeah. like, that shouldn't be the mindset. Yeah. You're thinking of it as like a band aid to be ripped off yeah. where as it should be like, cool. It should be fun. It's like a pool. You slide into it's like something you're looking you, 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 you know what I mean? It's like getting into a hot tub. You're not like, sure. There's a little bit of like, Ooh, it could be a little too hot. It, like it might take a while to acclimatize, mm-hmm. but like, it's something that you you should want to like sit in and like enjoy yes. and sort of like and 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 relish in as opposed to being like cannonball in, hurt your knees and get out and run. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Um, so it's like, take it's also take your time. I think I'm assuming the car thing is because you guys don't have, do they have access? Do they have their age? 26. So okay. I don't, I don't know if there's a, uh, like a roommate or you guys still live at home or yeah, like I, cars are really bad. Call. Cars I'm are sorry. Bad, bad call. call. It's like, not- I am quite experienced in sex. And I think if I had to choose, a place that I would not want to have sex. It's the shower and a car. Yes. They are like, the two worst. Those are the two places that I have no interest in having there's sex no, with. There's no fucking room in a car. Everything's awkward. And it's like, while there is a thrill of being out in public and maybe getting caught, there's also the fear of being out in public and getting maybe caught. And like, and I don't know if you want to add that level mm-hmm. of anxiety into, into the first time when you already have sort of like yeah. layers of things that you need to work and through. Like you're going to be awkward because you know, virgin first time, in your head and car sex is inherently just awkward. So awkward. So the awkwardness is compounding. There's knees. It's if you cannot do a car again, if you're just like doing hand stuff, fine. Yeah. Car's fine. You know what I mean? If you want to make out, like I also really want to know what this girl said, because if she's like, we're going to fuck on Wednesday, like, yes, that's one thing. If she's like, Oh, we should like hook up, but she might mean we should like not cuddle and do something more. Then you don't want to walk into this being like, we're fucking. Yeah, I I think hopefully in this conversation in which you guys have like talked about all this yeah. stuff, hopefully she's got the experience and sort of like awareness to be like also factoring the, the car into hopefully the solution as well. You know what I mean? Or, or the situation of being like, look car is bad the the best thing to do in a car is to be ridden like is cowgirl unless you can like get out of the car. 
in which case yeah, you, can, also, if you can be like out and like have them in doggy that's yeah, also a, a, that's a, fine but again if you're in a place that's safe and like yes. legal it's not never gonna be legal but like if you're in the middle of nowhere no one's gonna find you great but yeah. like you don't want to fucking yeah get, get arrested, arrested <laughs> first or have time. some weird like hitchhiker come and kill you with a hook yes exactly so i think talk about a hookup hey bad don't make that face me <laughs> There's there's a couple things like one try to try not to do it in a car. Yes, if you cannot do it in a car, don't do it in a car. Just it sucks. Yeah, protection. Bring some. Yep. Like make sure you have it. You don't want to be like, oh, hold on, let's detour to a play. Like just have it on you. Yep. Have more than one just in case. Yep. You know what I mean? Like if you do go soft or you fumble one or it breaks or you want to go a second time. Yeah. Like, or you or you come immediately and yeah. you're like, well, I'm gonna take ten minutes and, and yeah, some water like, and. Don't you don't want to fuck yourself over by not having enough condoms or make a bad choice because you don't have enough condoms. Yeah. Like I did the first time I had sex. So do that. Take it slow if you can. Yeah. And this is, I think, a very important thing. If for any reason you cannot perform, don't take it as a failure. You know what that is? That is time for you to practice making her come. Yeah. And that's if the best thing you get out of this is some genuine time with a vagina and a woman and a clit and all this. Sorry, it sounds really shitty when I like talk about with a vagina. I didn't mean it that way. You know what I mean? But I mean, you're getting practice of fingering or yeah. going down on someone. That's pretty fucking invaluable. So like, don't get in your own head. Don't ruin it. Don't throw a huff. Don't get embarrassed because even if you don't fuck, this could be invaluable to you. I, Take I, it as like, okay. And yeah. the more she has fun, the less there's any spotlight on you. So it's, it's self-defense. It's self-preservation. It's yeah. everything good. And you get practice and it'll build up your confidence. And who knows in the middle of it, Mr. Penis might be around to disrespect someone's culture. You know? <laughs> um, yeah. I think pivoting quickly, like if you do start feeling and, and like we talk about all the time that like consent can be rescinded at any point in time. Mm -hmm. If at any point in time you feel like, oh, this isn't it or I'm not ready or whatever yeah. you can, you can pull the rip cord mm -hmm. and, and don't feel like less of a man or a loser yeah. or whatever. If, if you're not ready to have sex, don't have sex because again, that you think it's a bandaid that yes. needs to be torn off. So like respect your boundaries at the same time and, and be aware of that. And as Nell said, like be ready to pivot and be like, okay, penetrative sex might not be the thing that happens mm -hmm. tonight. But if you're like, Hey, while we're here, I would love like, can you teach me how to finger? Like if yeah. she's, if she's on board with this like, like idea of, I would love to finger you. Yes. And then if she'll probably be like, hell yeah. And again, you've already broken the barrier of awkwardness and whatever. So you could literally be like, I'm nervous. Well, one, I think if you can't get it up, just be like, I'm sorry, I'm nervous. Yeah. She'll get it. Right. And then you don't have to be like, oh, this doesn't happen. Or like, oh, or like try to hide it or whatever. If she's cool, she won't mind. And if she's not cool, it sucks anyway. So it doesn't, there's no, win scenario or there's no lose scenario because you've either already lost or you've already won doesn't matter but you can ask her be like hey i'm new can you teach me how to do this and it's a win-win because yeah. she's gonna get more pleasure out of it you're gonna learn and your confidence is gonna go up and then it won't be a failed like you can take so many good things out of this but yeah. to do that you need to not get in your own head not like you know clam up not like throw a temper tantrum not get super awkward just realize this happens to a lot of people. They either will come way too quickly or not get it up at all. Those are the two most yeah. common outcomes. So it's I mean, the first time I had sex and, and like I was the horniest man still am. But like at that point in time, it's like all I wanted to do was have, but I was so nervous that like I lost my erection almost immediately. So like, yeah, I, I, I was the opposite. I just came real quickly. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I was like, like rock hard. And the second it was time to like, figure out how to get inside i was just like no nope, cool <laughs> i was like let's go we're done <laughs> very quickly and it was fine like they didn't mind they were like nervous as well and we the the upside of being so young and horny was i was just like literally ready to go again 10 minutes later if if even yeah. so we had sex a few times and the second two lasts a lot longer great but that's the thing it's like just don't get in your own head. Don't sabotage if things don't go perfectly, which let's be fair. They probably won't, which is fine. Yeah. Make like save everything you can from it for your own sake, for her sake. You know, it'll be fine. 
And I, I was also in a worse position because I don't think I had told my partner that that would have been my first time mm-hmm. until like after our, our first attempt, I, w- I, I think I was like, ah, that would have been, that would have been the first time for me. And they were mm-hmm. like, oh, really? Like, and I, I think that would have taken, a, if, if my partner had known, there would have, I think, been a little bit more like care and, and yeah. you know what I mean? Like, well, like we, me and my partner at the time had been dating for like five months and we were like, we both knew it would be our first time. So yeah. It was definitely, we both went into it and we had that like, so it was great. You know? Yeah, we we probably were dating about the same amount of time too, but we were waiting for uh, my partner at the time to get like birth control and like waiting a couple of months to sort of like mm. get it going. So, I mean, like, thankfully, that was sort of like the period of time where I got very good at oral sex because mm. I was like, I mean, if you're making me come with your mouth, then like. It'd be insane not to be I, returning like, the favor. Yeah, like, I, I've got to, I've got to fire back with, with equal. Sure. Um, so it's like, thankfully it's like, you know, e- even though I was struggling with sex at that time, I, I was pretty confident in being able to like pleasure my partner yeah. at the end of the day, regardless of like and what that happened. is going to take so much weight off your shoulders. Yeah. Right. So just, if it doesn't go well, salvage it in the best way possible. Like yep. do yourself favors, do her favors. Don't get in your head. Don't freak out take it as an opportunity to practice other stuff. Yeah. And like, it's a win-win you're good. Yeah. Hopefully she's cool. And hopefully she'll want to see you again. Mm -hmm. And hopefully like you guys can figure out things and like, be like, don't try the same thing over and over again. Like, don't make it like every Wednesday, you guys are going to go to the, like out in the middle of the woods in your car and like, try to have sex. It's like, if something doesn't work, like maybe try something else. You know what I mean? Like maybe be like, okay, well, you know, hopefully you guys have a place you can go at some point in time and be like, all right, come over and like, we'll make out. Mm -hmm. And we'll just, we'll just make out and see what happens or come over and we'll, I I fingered you and you taught me how to finger. It's like, next time I want to go down on you and you can like, sort of like walk me through that. And just sort of like, because the more comfortable you get with sex and each other and each other, you'll find that like, you'll start like all, all the other insecurities start like melting off you a little bit more. And confidence is, is so, so important in sex because like, I remember I, I've, I've talked about this before. It was like when I first started having sex, my, my sexual stamina was really, really bad. And I was, I, I came very quickly. And then there was like a, an eight month period of time where I just didn't have any sex. Hmm. Uh, and then the first time I had sex again, it was like, for whatever, I don't know what the fuck changed or happened. I don't hmm. know. I was able to last a lot longer and like my confidence mm-hmm. skyrocketed. And which that then just, in turn made you last longer, which then in turn, yeah, yeah it's dicks are weird. They, they're contrary little fuckers. Like yeah, it's, our, our brains are constantly working against yeah. our body and our body is constantly working against For our brain. reasons unknown. They All hate the, each other. Yeah. It's, it's very, very frustrating. So like I've had sex thousands of times probably at this point and mm. I still don't know with 100% certainty what my body is going to do. Oh no. Like I, yeah. Ages ago. Uh, there were three different sexual experiences I had in like three weeks with three different women and two of them very like what I would have expected. One of them, I came so quickly and I was like, well, okay, this would have crushed my confidence if it was a decade earlier. Yeah. You know what I mean, but I was like, whatever, like they didn't mind. I didn't mind. We did other stuff. And I was like, I was just super horny, I guess. And yeah. then I was like, we'll just go now. Great. Even with like the same partner where it's just like, sometimes like I, I don't come. Mm. I don't know. I don't know why. It's, it's not that I don't want to. Cold floor. Cold floor. Um, if you haven't then, been to the live shows, you didn't get the pyramid <laughs> thing. You didn't get the cold floor thing. Yeah. Um, We're sorry. But then there are other times where it's just like, oh, you've touched me for four seconds, and I, yeah, I gotta go take a cold shower real yeah. quick. It's uh, the body's a funny thing. Yep. Uh, all right. I'm gonna hit you with this one uh, by Throw R A Shift seventy eight forty eight posed as the boyfriend, twenty six year old male of a married woman, thirty two year old female. Now I'm catching feelings. Long story short, a friend of a friend reached out and asked for a favor. Married woman found out her husband was cheating on her with a side piece. She wanted a man by her side when she tells her husband she wants a divorce. Apparently, I look like her celebrity crush, so I was perfect. We ironed out the details. Her lawyer stated it wouldn't affect the the divorce because adultery doesn't matter, and they didn't have a prenup. It wasn't going to be a contentious divorce anyways. I wasn't going to be in danger. There were no kids. So I said yes. Honestly, I was a little in awe of her and her insane planning skills. I have no idea why her husband would cheat. Anyway, she plans the whole thing out, tells her husband she's going away for a business conference. He brings his side piece to their house when she's gone. That day, we just sat at home until her husband came in with his side piece. He opens the door to find her, the wife. She says she filed for divorce and he served the papers. I'm her fake boyfriend. Husband freaks out. Side piece freaks out. We book it out of there. 
We continued hanging out. It's been almost a year since then. She's incredible and I'm catching feelings. I know she finds me physically attractive, but could she be into me? Should I pursue this relationship when she gets divorced? Should I tell her my feelings now? Would she get freaked out? I mean, like, I can't tell you how this woman feels. Wait, wait. I thought you were an award-winning podcaster. Yeah, not psychic, unfortunately. Okay, I'm going to have to take that award back. Okay, that's fine. But here's what I will say is the likelihood that someone who came up with a crazy, almost sitcom-esque scheme. So, did we... Did we say to do this? Like, <laughs> was this our idea? We've been doing this long enough that we definitely could have in the time frame, and we also could have forgotten about it. Yeah. So the fact that she was like, hey, I need a, a fake boyfriend for a one and done sort of like wild scheme and then proceeded to hang out with you for a year. The fact that neither one of you have made a move yet mm-hmm. blows my mind. But it is good, though. Because I think if you were like, this was last week, I'd be like, look, it's a bummer, but it's too soon. But the fact that you've done a year, a year's not the worst. The danger is that by now you're besties. I guess it depends on like what you want out of this. Like if you, if you actually want to date this woman Mm -hmm. and not just fuck her, I was like, I don't think there's any like, I said, catching feelings. He's not catching boners. It's true. Okay. So presumably he's starting to like, really like her. I, I think, dude, she can plan so well. She plans so well. I think now, I, I think any time after this point in time is as good as any to tell. Like, I don't think you have to wait for her to get divorced, right? Like, there's no. He's already fucking someone. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, I, I don't think there's any harm. Like, I, I don't think there's any sort of like, you're not doing yourself a service by waiting. And I don't think you're doing her a service by waiting either. Because no, also you're lying. Yeah. You know, if you're just pretending to be friends and you want something more. So I think it's as simple as being like, hey, you plan so good. <laughs> Damn, Want to plan a date for us? Uh, that would be funny. But no, just be like, hey, I know you are going through some stuff. You've got the divorce, blah, blah, blah. I just want to tell you, like, over the last year, I have really developed feelings for you. I would love to go on a date. If that's not something you're into. That's cool. And if you're willing to be friends, if she says no, say that. If you're not, then say, I might need some time apart. Yeah. And that's it. Simple. We've talked about this before. Have have a thing and be like, mm-hmm. oh, hey, come on. Like, come on over like, and do a, you know, I, I'm doing a thing. Like, come over, come watch a movie, whatever. Mm-hmm. And then she comes out and it's like a romantic dinner that you've planned and be like, gotcha, bitch. Yeah, I can plan you, too. Uh, yeah. You're not the only smart one here. Or, I, you know, I think that would be fun of being like, you know, or or have like your friend who asked you to do this go to her place, and then so your friend is bringing her something home. Plan. We can't plan like this woman. Yeah, it's fine. I could, I could. If I if I had all the pieces, I could. Um, but I think like I think pulling a she can plan so well. <laughs> I think pulling a uh, a, a reversal like a okay, no reverse. The card. thing is, you got to do sick. She loves sitcoms. Clearly, yeah, you got to sitcom her right back. Yeah. Who's the celebrity crush? What movies have they been in? Recreate Ooh. a fucking scene from the fucking movie. That's there you an go. That's excellent idea. That's the plan gears going. What if it's a really weird celebrity crush though? Yeah, it's like fucking Jason Manzukis. Yeah. Just <laughs> light something on fire. It feels like him. <laughs> yeah. Um what if it's your man like Anthony Hopkins or something? Just like eat her, I guess. <laughs> Which is actually relevant if we get to enough questions. Yeah. Which we probably won't. I think that's it. Yeah. One, no time like the present. Two, can't lose if you don't. Try, wait that's the opposite no harm no foul i don't know do it <laughs> you miss 100 percent of the shots that you don't exactly. take exactly i think you can't win if you don't try and if you don't try you do lose yeah how about that yeah just fucking just shoot your shot yeah be chill and there's no harm yeah uh but be ready she might not be in in the state of mind for that and that's okay yeah she might not want to pursue anything with you and she might not be ready be ready to to do anything so as as we always say it's like be ready to be honest about your intentions as well. Like if, if hanging out with her mm. no longer seems like a good idea, then, then don't do it. Yeah. Don't, don't be like, okay, well I'm going to keep hanging out with you and secretly yeah. pine for mm-hmm. you. Uh, and, and hope then, that you change your mind. Cause that fucking sucks for all of you. And I'm going to be really shitty when you finally date someone. Yeah. I'm going to hate them. We're going to blow up anyway, but this time it's going to be shitty. This is from hot profession. 1622. Oh, they're a podcaster. <laughs> Boyfriend, not actually into the same stuff as me. Today, my boyfriend was teasing me by saying stuff he knew would turn me on. And we also have this thing where we like stuff we are into on Twitter so each other can see. When he said the teasing and kinky words to me, I was immediately turned on. But 
couldn't help but think if he actually likes saying the things that he says. So I asked him if he actually liked this stuff or not. He said that wasn't really something he was into, but did and said these things because it made me happy. Knowing what I know now, I feel icky and gross for liking the stuff I do. And even more gross knowing that he doesn't and probably doesn't enjoy it as much. Uh, he says not to overthink it, but it's hard. How should I go about it? Edit. I should probably have told you what I'm into. It's nothing too wild or anything. I like calling my partner daddy, and I like when words, phrases such as princess parts or puppy parts are used, and I'm slightly into pet play. My preference is being puppy. Stuff like that. I don't know what princess parts and puppy parts. I think, I don't think English is the first language based on like okay. some of the spelling stuff. So I think puppy parts and princess parts is like the part where he says princess and the part where I he says. I- I didn't like puppy parts the way it was presented. Yes, but I th- I think that's yes. that's what she means. It's like that's fine. I like when he calls me princess or like the, mm-hmm. the the parts of the conversation where he calls me princess or puppy. Yeah. So one, don't overthink it. Don't it overthink seems like it. you definitely have. Two, like there doesn't seem to be an issue here. No. It feels almost like getting a blowjob and being like, "Are you getting as much pleasure out of this as I am?" No, you're not. You're not orgasming from sucking my dick. Unless you are. Unless you are, which, hey, great. You know um, what I mean? I'm not orgasming from going down on someone. Do I love it? Yeah, I love it because they're enjoying it. And I think that's yes. it. It's like he doesn't need to be like, hey, princess, uh, like, and, yeah. and love it. If he, like, the enjoyment he's getting out of it is you enjoying it. And Th- that's fine. And that's what he said. I, I think, like, the you're asking the wrong question, at least in terms of, like, what I think you were looking for. I think what you should have asked, not do you like this, is are you comfortable with this? Right? Does it bother you? Yeah. Because I think those are two very different things. I think there is no harm in in relationships as a general concept. It's about compromise. It's about doing things sometimes that like might be not too high on your list, Mm -hmm. but you know it's high on your partner's list. So like you kind of like temper expectations kind of like they will lower it down a bit because they know it's not super, super high on your list, mm-hmm. but you'll raise it up a bit so that because, you know, it's high on their list. Right. Yeah. So it's like but there, uh, there's also things like there's a difference between like, oh, calling someone princess isn't my kink and I hate calling someone princess. They're very different. Yeah. It's such a leap to be like, oh, he doesn't like it as much as me. Yeah. Yeah. That's fine. That's fine. That's totally fine. Like yes. he also didn't say he didn't like it. Yeah. And he is clearly willing to do it. And you guys seem to enjoy doing it and do it regularly. And it seems to go well. Those are the important things. Yes. The fact that like he's doing this unprovoked or on as like if, if you were like, hey, can you do the princess thing today? Yeah. But and he was like, oh, he puppy parts. Yeah, or even even if he like wasn't rolling his eyes, even if like, but if like if you had to ask every time to get in, that was the only way you got yeah. it. And then you were like, hey, do you like it? He was like, I really don't. Yes. That's different story. Yeah. But the fact that he's doing it unprovoked he he knows you like it so every now and then he'll do it and like he does it without being asked he does it without any sort of provocation he just kind of like does it because he knows you'd like it Mm -hmm. then that should be enough for you to like sort of connect the dots and be like oh he's comfortable doing it Mm -hmm. he's willing to do it for me and also maybe fine happy to do it yes you didn't ask that you asked if that's his kink and he said no no which is fine but like again if like if i'm going down on someone i fucking love going down on people yeah i do not enjoy it as much as they do yeah, there's there's no physical way I could. I'm not getting mo- multiple fucking orgasms. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like if they were like, oh, hey, do you enjoy it as much as me? And I was like, well, no. And then they were like, I feel gross. This is shitty. It's like that. that's just you're you're not understanding the transaction here. And that's I think, OK, I think what you need to do, and this is 100 percent for your benefit. Yeah. Uh-huh is sit down with him and be like, hey, so the conversation we had the other day about the princess and the puppy play and that kind of stuff made me feel really gross and insecure. And I just need some reassurance going back to this. I think this is going to be my thing for the year. I also I also think when you say it makes you feel gross and insecure, don't in any way make it feel like it's their fault because it seems like it isn't. So just be like, I overthought it. I was just kind of in my own head. I just want to like talk about it a little bit more. Yeah. Right. And, and, and be like, I just need some reassurance that this is something that you're both comfortable with and that happy it doesn't, it, it doesn't like affect you in any way. If you are happy to do it and you're comfortable doing it, then that like, that's what I need to hear. Yeah. And I want you to tell me honestly. And you can even be like, my worry is that you're doing this, but you like, it's an ick for you or you really don't enjoy it, but you're yeah. just doing it to please me. Because again, like, spelling out what your fear is 
is something they can address really well, as Absolutely. opposed to like, oh, is this your kink? No. And then you just spiral into, oh, he fucking hates it. You yeah. Know? So just be like, I'm terrified that every time you do this, it's a drag for you or it's a turn off and like it's an imposition, blah, 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 blah. And then he'll be like, no, it's totally fine. And probably something along the lines of it's great to be able to turn you on. And I love yeah. playing into that because that's what he will get out of it. And that's great. Yeah. So, so take a moment and like, if you feel this way and, and it doesn't matter, like it has, it has nothing to do with kinks. Like, it, like in any aspect of your relationship, if there's something you feel like you're being a burden for your partner, or if you think you're annoying them by doing a, a thing, then like talk to them huh? and be like, Hey, I lately I've been feeling this way. Lately. I feel like my morning shower singing is, for is sure. annoying you. And I just want to make sure that it's not, I, mm. or, or like, I, I need some reassurance that you know, if it does bother, you will tell me Yeah, things like that, right? Like, well, like I, I talk a lot in case anyone's surprised by that. <laughs> uh -huh. And it's like, sometimes I will just go off and I'll be like, Oh fuck, I got to do this thing for the podcast. I gotta do this thing. And like, I'm writing the story and like, I'm the problem I have is that like, I do blah, blah, blah. And like, I'll kind of go off and it's like me and my partner will like go for a walk and I'll just chat for like 20, 30 <laughs> minutes straight, you know? And there are times where I'm like, look, I know I just kind of went off. Like, was that really annoying? Like, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, yeah, there are times where it's like, you know what? I actually wanted to get a thing. I'm like, great. What, what do you want to talk about? And then we'll go. And yeah. the majority of the time, it's like, no, because I know she would tell me if that was the case. But sometimes I get in my own head about it. But yes. I check in. And th like, boom, it's, it's that easy. And it's, it's like so important to do that. And I, I think a lot of people, as much as we and, and this is communication and as much as we say communication is like the answer to 90 percent of the questions that we get, mm -hmm. I, I think a lot of it. And this is something again, I've been talking a lot this year, especially because it's something I've recently learned of being like the, the ask of reassurance is so fucking powerful, but it's so fucking scary, mm -hmm. right? Like it's so scary to open and be vulnerable and be like, I need you to help me. And like we've all, especially, of, especially as men, especially as specifically dudes. told never to do that ever. But I, I mean, like, I think there is also, we're, we're kind of swinging back, like the pendulum swinging back towards women where it's like, you're supposed to be a boss bitch. You're supposed yeah. to be, you don't need a man. You you're also meant to be the cool girl. Like yeah. the, you're not like other girls. You're totally fine. Like never any problems. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so I think that like this pendulum is swinging sort of like both ways where it's like the we're damage. All, we're all just <laughs> the, the damage Fuck you society. We could really do without this. <laughs> yeah, right? the, the damage has definitely been done to men when yeah. it comes to being vulnerable and asking for reassurance and being open with your partner. But now I think like, like I said, it's like it's swinging back the other way where it's like, I think we are kind of socializing women to you can, you can be a boss bitch and ask for reassurance this, that's the, in fact a boss bitch move it's the bossiest bitch you think you could do bossiest bitch just and i think we get like so scared and so hung up on this shit and then no one wants to talk and no one wants to to, to be vulnerable no one wants to ask for reassurance because they're worried that it's going to be make them needy or make them blah 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 and i was thinking about this question earlier today and i was just like it's funny to me that a lot of people would be like, oh, I'm scared to have this conversation or I don't like, and a lot of the times it's like people they've been married to or people they've been in relationships with and people they've like been dating for a long time. It's like, if you aren't comfortable having these conversations with the person you've chosen to be with, yeah. then you really need to reevaluate two things. One, why you're with them, why you're with them. And two, why you're scared because yes. like the, the person you're with might, 100% be down to have these conversations. Yeah. You might just be really scared and it might be an insecurity mm -hmm. thing. And it's or, like, I'm not saying these conversations are comfortable no. or easy. No, no. And you're absolutely within your right to be scared mm -hmm. and insecure, apprehensive, and, nervous, and nervous, any of those yeah. things. Yes. But you need to then sort of like fall back on the trust you have with your partner. Yeah. To, if you don't have that, you need to re examine why. Yes. Like if your thing is that they're down and you're apprehensive, Examine that. If your thing is that they are not down and you can't trust them, why are you with them? Yeah. yeah. So I, I think there's like a lot of like fundamental shit that we need to start like mm -hmm. digging into our relationships. And I think the second we start doing that, your your relationships are either going to get a lot stronger or gone. Yes. And hey, <laughs> in that case, it's a win win. That's that's what if we it's want. It's meant to be gone. It's meant to be gone. Yeah. I think that's going to do it for us. We're going to briefly hop on to some online dating profile reviews and point out the red flags, point out the green flags, maybe more of one or the other. <laughs> Are you ready? I got four. Yeah. I'll just blast them real quick. Let's do it. Uh, nameless 45. If not for the blonde beauty, my baby girl, I don't wish contemplating life that goes double. If she ends up blind to what people are like, 
Caring about what others think, pray she's beyond such. Is it greedy, absurd, or unreasonable? Your partner be happy if asked, how's experiencing Bruges for long weekend? Not say, no thanks, I've just got out of a violent relationship. I've wasted lots of life. I'd love to experience things with a woman whose IQ exceeds her brass size. Looking for a miracle, and miracle is spelled M-I-R-R-I-C-A-L. Again, I'm assuming English, not the first language here. The thing is, the English, the way it's done doesn't speak of, like, language barrier. It speaks of, like, you know, person who misspells shit. Like, what is W-O-T? You know what I mean? Like, I I feel like that's... Yeah, but, like, I, I guess I'm thinking, like, grammatically, like... <laughs> Maybe. Like, hey, I, I can't tell you. What I can tell you is Bruges is great for a long weekend. Bruges, Bruges is so good for a long Bruges weekend. Bruges is beautiful. So I'm going to give this a 10 because it's made me think of Bruges, and I love Bruges. Yeah, you, you want your partner to be happy if you ask, how's experiencing Bruges for a long weekend? Not say, no thanks, I've just got out of a violent relationship. Yeah, I mean, like, there's... <laughs> There's a lot in here that I'm not like, I like, I don't understand it enough to critique it. Okay. Let's talk about the best part. Looking for a woman who's, and who's the spelt wrong. Of course. IQ exceeds her brass size. That is. It doesn't make any sense. It's so, I mean, like, I don't understand why I would love a woman whose IQ is the same as their bra size. Because if they're smart, their boobs are huge. Oh, shit. They're insane. Oh, shit. But also, like, I'm pretty but sure. Like, what, one, like, there's there's a letter in it. So already. Yeah. What what does that mean, sir? And, and secondly, I, like, even the biggest bra size that I've ever heard of, it's like. Like 42, I think. I'm sure that goes more. But like. But no, I think that's when you like. I think it like it, it's almost, you know, like once you get 42, it like reset. It goes into the next. I don't know. But, but all I, I know, know is I've probably. never. I've never seen one in what I would consider a healthy IQ. You know what I mean? Like, yes, at yeah. best you're in the lowest. So it's like, yeah, you're probably going to find a woman who exceeds that. And also there's a letter in there, sir. Yeah. I'm Are trying to the biggest bra size ever. Yeah. I'm trying to, but it's, I don't want to see the biggest bra size. I, I guess that would be just look it up. Just see what it says. It just keeps telling me like, yeah, probably it's probably like what you've Tw- twenty eight to fifty two. I guess is the is okay. the fifty two is still a terrible idea. Yeah, if so, someone's, if someone's IQ is fifty two, this man, I'm going to give it a zero because it's hard to read. Yeah, I'm giving it a zero because it does make no sense. All right, this is Jeff, uh, thirty seven. I'm looking for my second bride. My ex-wife divorced me when she caught me with an escort. Don't worry, you won't have to see my kids. I don't see them either because my ex-wife has full custody. By the way, I don't use condoms. Good thing you have your HPV vaccine. Hey, dude, this is terrible. <laughs> Arguably one of the worst we've read that isn't just straight up homophobic or racist. racist or, yeah, this is this is so, 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 so bad. Like admitting that you cheated, mm-hmm. um, admitting you like don't care about your kids, admitting you don't care about like people's safety and yeah. health. And it's like HPV is not the only Mm-hmm. But he does kind of also imply that he has it, which is weird. I don't know, man. It's- yeah, there's there's a lot here that's really bad. So I'm going to give this a zero. Yeah. Uh, Sabine, 26. My standards for men I'll date are through the roof. Steamy fantasy books have skewed my views. So unless you look like Reese or Cassian, six foot with abs and wings, I'm not interested in seeing you. <laughs> so this is, I think, like, I think this is funny. I enjoy this because it's like she sets up the joke of being like, my standards are really, really high. And then she pays it off with being like, you need wings. You need wings. Yeah. Right. Like, so I think this is a very structured joke that is actually quite funny. And I, the more I think about it, I'm like, oh, yeah, no, no, this is actually really good. And I think it gives you a lot of space to play. Yes. Right. Like, if I got this message and I matched with this person, I would talk to them like, a cheesy romance novel oh, for right sure. like like i would i and would like bonus points for figuring out i'm pretty sure it's a court of Thorn- thorns and roses that everyone's very steamy for right now that these are from so it's like you can just look a quick google and be like oh i don't have wings but i'll take you to the fey ball or something i don't yeah. know like you, you can play in that space so easily i will say there is a one in ten chance she's serious Sure, but I think but that's that gives her a nine out of ten which i will give this yeah i, I think that is a a great point And lastly, Robert, 45. Last week I turned 45, but my preferred age range is set to 18 to 24. When you come over, you'll see my collection of swords and anime girl dolls and ninja stars. I think your hair would look real nice done up in pigtails in my lap while I hold them like handlebars. (sighs) Like, look, I I think it's weird to 
stress how into young women you are. It is very weird. Uh, and if it, again, I, I try, I don't know. I, I, we've had this conversation at our last live show and like, I feel weird about age things because I don't want to say like, I don't want to tell a 24 year old that they aren't capable like specifically a 24 year old woman be like, Hey, you're a useless human being who doesn't have the agency to make yes. the choices to date and that's, who you want to date. That's the, the one thing I don't like about those like age gap conversations is that like age gaps can be really shitty. They yeah. can be really predatory. They can be really awful. Yes. I don't want to blanket ban them, but I also don't want to be seen, especially as a guy being like, Hey, it's fun. Like yeah. pick up those 18 yes. year old girls. Right. So it, it always feels really creepy if I don't say, yeah, that's fucked. But it, feels disingenuous to not try to at least look at the things. And there are things like there are people who can be. And again, well, you're mature for your age is the line of creepy predators. Mm -hmm. But like, there are things that go into it, such as like, and most of them are automatic, like no's, right. Where it's like, is it your boss? Is it someone with like all these powers? So it's like, you need to know those things, but there are some things that like, if you find them out, you're like, okay, it's not automatic no's at which point it's just down to the individuals, which again, isn't a very exciting answer and yeah. could be, you know, so it, it is awkward, but also what the fuck are you doing, Robert? But, but this, this seems mean, very creepy. This specifically, like the idea of being like, I'm an older man. Mm-hmm. I'm specifically looking for younger women. Like, yeah. it, it's not that like I was at a fucking comic con and I ran into a 24 year old and we have everything in common. Yes. And, you know what I mean? It's not that it's like, you know, you're specifically targeting mm-hmm. women Which of this age is one thing that he's done it. But another thing that he's talking about, like that, that he's that's about, how specific, like, but then also like going into the pigtails, which is yes. again like sort of an infantilized mm-hmm. sort of like view of women. It's it's a very sort of like young look, yeah. which just sort of is like the the cherry on top of the cringy, creepy Sunday yeah. this man has it's, made. It's just bad. Um, so I'm also going to give this a zero. I'm going to give it a minus one. Mm, okay. Yeah, I don't like it. I, I think I'm on. You know what? I'm I'm going to give it a minus two. I'm going to give it a minus <laughs> three. Okay, we got to get out of here. Thank you very much for listening. It has been an absolute pleasure. If you'd like to support the show, please head on over to fbuddiespodcast.com. Please. Click the Patreon please. link. You get a bonus episode. Please. Where we do fucking wild shit. We do. We usually record it second, so we usually do an episode and then a Patreon episode, and we're mm-hmm. usually loopy by that time. Yeah. And we, we just say crazy shit. Sometimes we play games as well, which I'm going to try to start bringing back. Okay. We've, we've had asks or requests to, to bring games back, and so we'll I'm going to start we'll bringing it. some games back. Uh, yeah, if you want a little bit more of us in your lives and you want to help us keep doing this and not go broke or insane it would be wonderful and everyone who is on our patreon we absolutely love you and it'll so stop much. me from having to make a third podcast because i don't want to do it it will stop dame but now see now they want that content oh what did what's that an extra episode a month is content that you can get right now we love you thank you to everyone who came to the show thank you to live and maddie from 30 going on 13 they were incredible uh we had a lot of fun with them uh it was our last live show go listen to their podcast and I'm going to really quickly thank Josh Eagle and the Harvest for the song Paper Stars, and then I'm going to hit you with some bad sex writing. You ready? Yes. This is Perfume by Patrick Suskind. And she was young, so very young, that the flow of her lure had not yet grown viscous. What the fuck does that mean? Yeah, you know. Her full limbs were still smooth and solid, her breasts plump and pert as hard-boiled eggs, and the planes of her face, brushed by her heavy black hair, still had the most delicate contours and secret places. Her hair, however, was gone. The murderer had cut it off and taken it with him, along with her clothes. Nice. I always love the like the the swisheroo at the end. Where yeah. it's like, Oh, it's a dead person. Oh, it's, it's a corpse. It's cool. <laughs> like you've been just like leering at this corpse. Like, damn, look at those hard boiled eggs. She was murdered, sir. <laughs> damn, those titties look like hard boiled eggs. Detective, please. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Why do your notes just? <laughs> <laughs> it's how can you write this and be yeah, like yeah. just like you're looking through notes he's like flipping his no, notepad the like the the young sort of inspector looks over at the the head inspector's notepad and just titties equal eggs yeah. question mark he's just like all that and then at the bottom dead brackets <laughs> <laughs> my name is dave miller and i'm now spain we've been your fuck buddies <laughs>